Hurricane Katrina battered Louisiana and Mississippi on August 29, 2005, with storm surge up to 28 feet and waves up to 55 feet, the highest surge and waves ever recorded in North America. Large portions of the 350 miles of levees and flood walls around New Orleans were overwhelmed. Following Katrina, the Corps of Engineers worked nonstop to repair and improve 220 miles of levees and flood walls by June 2006. The Corps repaired and improved levees using special materials to reduce the risk of erosion from waves and overtopping. The hurricane and storm damage risk reduction system can now defend against the effects of a 100-year storm. Work continues to complete the additional features. This 100-year system reduces the risk of damage from a storm surge that has a 1% chance of happening in any given year. The system also contains multiple lines of defense requiring federal, state, local, and individual actions. The core is now fighting storm surge before it reaches the city or at the perimeter. Interior canals have been removed from the first line of defense by construction of floodgates and surge barriers that restrict storm surge from entering the canals. This redesign of the perimeter system has removed 68 miles of flood walls and levees from direct exposure to storm surge. Several kinds of features help to form this perimeter system. The most common are levees, which are earthen embankments designed to hold back surge, flood walls, which are concrete and steel vertical barriers, and storm surge barriers, which are gates and flood walls that prevent storm surge from entering the most populated areas of the city. Levee and flood wall elevations vary throughout the system based on different site conditions and requirements. Flood walls stand alone or atop levees. Eye wall flood walls have been strengthened and transitions between structures such as flood walls and levees have been hardened against storm surge using concrete or rock. In critical areas, more robust T walls were installed, so named because they look like an inverted letter T. In addition, the Corps built gates, breakwaters, pump stations, and safe rooms for pump operators, and added armoring to levees to combat erosion caused by overtopping in stronger storms. Armoring consists of rock, concrete, grass, clay, or other material. Strategically located pump stations reduce flooding in low-lying areas by removing rainwater. Many of the 78 pump stations in the system have been repaired since 2005, improving interior drainage. Floodgates throughout the system provide openings for vehicle and railroad access. When floodwaters approach, these gates are quickly closed to protect the areas behind them and close the perimeter system. A new, stronger 3 and one half mile concrete T-wall replaced an existing flood wall near the lakefront. Levees have been raised and foreshore protection added at Lake Pontchartrain. The Corps is completing an elevated ramp over a 10-foot concrete flood wall at the south end of the Causeway Bridge at Lake Pontchartrain. This busy transportation corridor has remained open throughout the construction phase. Interior pumps move rainfall out of the city through the 17th Street, Orleans Avenue, and London Avenue outfall canals and into Lake Pontchartrain. During Katrina, storm surge flooded the city through breaches in two of the three outfall canals. The Corps installed interim canal closures in 2006 to stop storm surge from entering the city. Interim pumps move rainwater around the gates when they are closed. These interim closure structures replaced interior canal flood walls as the primary defense by blocking storm surge before it can enter the canals. The interim closure structures provide the 100-year level of protection but they have a project life of only five to seven years. The Corps will replace these interim gates and pumps with permanent, more robust facilities by 2016. Near the eastern side of the city, a large shipping canal connects Lake Pontchartrain to the Mississippi River. This is known as the Inner Harbor Navigation Canal, or IHNC. 
The Seabrook Floodgate Complex is part of the IHNC Surge Risk Reduction Project, planned for completion in mid-2012. The system continues along Lake Pontchartrain with levees, breakwaters, and flood walls encircling New Orleans East before tying into the IHNC surge barrier at Lake Bourne. Levees and flood walls along the IHNC have been strengthened, but they are no longer the primary defense against storm surge. The IHNC surge barrier at Lake Bourne, the largest surge barrier of its kind in the world, is now the primary defense against storm surge for this area. It is also the Corps' largest ever Civil Works design-build construction project. The Seabrook Floodgate Complex and Lake Bourne Surge Barrier will work together to prevent storm surge from entering St. Bernard Parish, New Orleans East, the Lower Ninth Ward, Gentilly, and New Orleans metro areas, substantially lowering risk for this large area. To complete the perimeter system on the east bank, a 23-mile flood wall with elevations up to 32 feet connects the IHNC surge barrier to the Mississippi River levee in St. Bernard Parish. Across the river, a 15-mile section of Mississippi River levee is co-located with the Hurricane and Storm Damage Risk Reduction System. That stretch met the requirements for river flooding, but needed to be raised to meet the new 100-year criteria for the perimeter system. The eastern tie-in joins the system into the Mississippi River levee near Oakville. The project protects unincorporated areas of Plaquemines Parish and communities in the Oakville area. Critical to the entire West Bank, the eastern tie-in reduces risk to residences and businesses above Oakville. A short distance away is the largest project on the West Bank. The Gulf Intracoastal Waterway, or GIWW, West Closure Complex at the confluence of the GIWW and the Harvey and Algiers canals will prevent storm surge from entering the West Bank area through these two canals, blocking the surge at the perimeter. Public input was important as this area is also adjacent to a federally protected wetlands forest, historic areas, and businesses. The nearly $1 billion West Closure Complex consists of flood walls, foreshore protection, floodgates, earthen levees, the world's largest drainage pump station, and the nation's largest sector gate. The perimeter system continues with flood walls and levees to the company canal closure structure. This area has been developed over the years for recreational, residential, commercial, and industrial purposes. The Corps replaced the existing flood wall with a more robust 14-foot flood wall, constructed more than 1,000 feet of earthen levee, and built a gate across Bayou Signet. A pump station is being built adjacent to the new gate. Levees and pump stations defend against surge from the Bayou Signet area to the western tie-in, where the perimeter system once again joins the Mississippi River levee system. The western tie-in has several different components, including levees, flood walls, and floodgates. This project provides further risk reduction for the areas of Avondale, Wagaman, and Bridge City from storm surges coming through Lake Catawachi and the Greater Barataria Basin. The hurricane and storm damage risk reduction system includes higher, stronger levees, added scour protection, most eye walls replaced with stronger T walls, repaired existing pump stations, storm proofed pump stations, and improved interior drainage. In addition, the system has been redesigned to remove 68 miles of flood walls and levees from direct exposure to storm surge. And it has built-in resiliency so that it can stand up to overtopping by a 500-year storm surge. The five parish area has better protection than any time in its history, but there will always be risk. Even though flooding will be reduced with the 100-year system, there will still be a risk of flooding from larger, more powerful hurricanes. This is why evacuation orders should always be followed. In addition, the Corps is working with multiple agencies and organizations to restore the ecosystem and protect the coast in South Louisiana and beyond. Coastal ecosystem restoration is part of the integrated system of multiple lines of defense against storm surge. Building the hurricane and storm damage risk reduction system involves certain environmental challenges. 
The Corps identifies and mitigates those impacts according to law and policy. The National Environmental Policy Act process includes extensive public input, interagency coordination, consideration of alternatives, impact assessments, and all necessary mitigation. System projects fully meet all environmental requirements. The Corps and all of its federal, state, and local partners share responsibility for building the system. Tested by Hurricane Gustav in 2008, the still incomplete system withstood a storm surge of about 12 feet. The completed New Orleans perimeter system will defend against a 100-year event with an even greater surge. The nation's leading experts and the world's fastest supercomputers have provided the best science and engineering information available for the hurricane and storm damage risk reduction system. The Corps continues to look at all alternatives to reduce risk, including restoration and protection of coastal wetlands. The New Orleans area now has the best risk reduction system for a 100-year storm surge that today's engineering can build. For more detailed information on the risk reduction system in the New Orleans area, construction projects, and other information, please visit www.mvn.usace.army.mil.